Did you mess up? We all did. But 2022 is coming to a close and boy, howdy, has it been a learning process along the way in everyone's business, hopefully. If you're rocking it, good for you. But here today, we are talking about the two biggest things that we messed up in our business in this last year. It's two for 2022. So that's what we're do- talking about today. The two things that we goofed up, messed up, and just plain effed up in 2022. You'll definitely want to join us because we're going to have hopefully a lot of laughs and few tears on this episode of Business Bookend, part of the Beyond Real Estate Podcast. And Charles is wrapping up the week with us. So thanks to Charles for joining us on this week's episode, of Real Estate Roundup and Hashtag Dad Life. <laughs> It's all there. And now we're on Business Bookend. So join us for this week's episode of Business Bookend. We'll jump into it next. Welcome to Beyond Real Estate with Jalen, the podcast discussing parenting, real estate, and business. Every week we go in depth on how to become successful in business and life. Jalen, take it away. So the two biggest things we messed up in our business, we're talking about them today. And an honorable mention is going to be my intro for this episode. That was, I mean, you all saw how the sausage is made. So today we're talking, what's the two biggest mess up? Hopefully lighthearted, hopefully no one went bankrupt, that this would be a very sore subject if someone went bankrupt. And maybe someone out there did go and I'm just opening the closed door. I am going to quickly throw it over to Nick so that I stop rambling. Nick, what was uh, two of your biggest mistakes this year? How, how'd you mess up? How bad? <laughs> you can't get time back, right? That's one thing money can't buy. And I would say using too much of my time to get good at something that doesn't bring any value monetarily, right? It's going down rabbit holes to say, I really want to get better at creating this. And you've spent two hours at it. It's like, damn it. I just spent two hours at something that really doesn't matter that much. And my second thing would be printed material. Some people get irked by this one. I know, for example, business cards. There's some people are just adamant to check. I want to feel a business card. I want, and I have that right now, 100% when my business cards are run out, it's digital all day long because printed material costs. And again, for where we're at in 2022, moving into 23, I just feel like it's wasted money because there's maybe a tweak that I want to make and then update. And I look at what I have printed and I'm like, great. I just dropped 350 bucks on that or 500 bucks on that. And now I want to update it. So digitally, you can just update it, right? And everybody still has the link or the QR code or however you are sharing your information. So those are my two big mess ups looking back on 2022. Printed material, waste of money and trying to get good at something that doesn't really matter, wasted my time. The dozens of manual printers, the printing companies out there are just flipping their lids. There's (laughs) dozens of them out there and they're all gonna be knocking at your door after that slanderous comment. (laughs) Charles, what are some things that that you messed up on this year? That year, some whoopsies. I would say, I mean, kind of correlation to time, but it is just not properly setting the right. I think, I guess you can't predict the future, right? But you're trying to predict the future with your goals and just where the market is headed or where it's currently at has changed a lot in my industry. And I think if I could go back at the beginning of this year, I would change my goals to focus more on the commercial side of my industry and less on homes and auto. But I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So you see it now and you're like, man, I really wish I, I would have just focused on this all year. I would have been way better off. And it's like, yeah, you see that now because you've done it all year, right? That would be one thing I wish I could redo. And then the other thing is like he said, not necessarily printed marketing, but just marketing in general. I don't think we or us as a brokerage have necessarily spent enough or done enough in terms of marketing. And that's not always spending money, it's spending time doing the things. And I just don't think I I did enough there to help expand or grow my business. And that's something that I wanna take advantage of next year. I wanna make sure that I'm doing the marketing things, mostly probably gonna be a lot more digital than it would be physical. Although I do have a couple physical pieces, like I have business cards, I have a magazine and give out calendars every year to all of my clients. So we have a few things, but for the most part, I think what would be or lead to more success is gonna be more digital marketing for me. And that that's gonna look like Facebook, Google, maybe Yelp, those kind of advertisements. Nice. Love, love all of it that you guys talked about. Boy, I was staying near perfect though. I don't know. 
two is going to be hard. <laughs> no, there's plenty of things. Yeah, I think both of you guys touched on time. You can't ever get that back. That one, I get, but I think that one's also a hindsight one, right? Like, ah, I could have done this better, could have done that better. But my number one thing would have been focusing on individual products or processes that I am working on and not getting bogged down in the weeds sometimes. With the work that I do now in the mortgage industry, it can be waiting for a week for something to get done. And so you're like, okay, I'm gonna start on this other project. And so you start on this other project and you're like, oh, that other project too, I'm gonna start work. And then that first big one that you had to wait for a week finally comes back around. You're like, oh, I can start working on that again. So you forget the two smaller projects and now they're half finished and you're working on the bigger one. And so time management in that aspect and just kind of staying focused would be number one. and. Number two, I mean, I'm right there with you, Charles, when it comes to digital marketing, you know, it, it can be, it's a beast and the amount of work that you have to do to actually make it work properly sometimes can definitely be overwhelming and you're, man, there's so many ways to go with it, but picking just one true path and just sticking with it can be difficult. So I think, I think next year that will be one to be a bit more uh, conscious with the routes that I take and staying on that path. But let's be done with all this negativity. Let's talk about how we're going to make sure we don't make those same mess ups this year, this next coming year, since, you know, December is generally the time that as entrepreneurs, salespeople, any type of business person, you're looking on to 2023, you're saying, hey, this is the month that I'm going to figure my stuff out and I'm going to correct what I messed up last year and I'm going to make this next year even better. So Nick, how are you going to fix the two issues that you brought up that you had this last year? Not print anything. No, it's hard to, again, because hindsight is what it is. It's hard to predict to say, I'm only going to print this or that, but I can tell you what I'm not going to print. And it's some of the in informational buyer packets, seller packets that it's so easy to share that via digital anyway. So I guess it's just knowing where I'd spent money to say, yeah, I don't need to do that same thing. For me, I don't feel like it's too complicated there. And then when it comes to getting good at something that doesn't really matter, that's a self-awareness thing I know. My challenge is I like the creation piece of it. So yes, that's an excuse. But so that's <laughs> my, uh, not talking out of, hey, I'll never do that again. That's, I'm guilty of that. I know I'm guilty of that. And some of it I'm okay with. So to be honest, like I look at it and say, okay, I spent more time there than I needed. Number one, did, was that in place of something that could have been more productive of my time? If that's the case, that's an issue. But if it's okay, right now, this week or today, I'm slower and I'm going down a rabbit hole of content creation. For example, like I, I like content creation. I like whether it's the recording of things, coming up with the dialogue for things. Like I don't mind that what a lot of people find boring and monotonous, like no chance I'm going to spend time there. I don't mind spending time there. But like I said, just making sure I'm not scheduling that in place of or that's not taking the plate to something else that can of course bring in dollars. Didn't do that this year, but again, I just know I spent more time than I know I probably should have in that space. So for me, uh, basically with the goal setting, I'm gonna be more focused on commercial insurance, specifically a specific type of industry that I'm focusing on, which would be HVAC. So I'm gonna focus solely on, not, not solely, but I'm gonna devote like a good majority of my time focusing on, you know, networking and reaching out to sp the HVAC people specifically. And then the other amount of time will be, you know, dealing with our leads that come in, doing home, auto, those types of quotes. Cause I still have people that I work with, realtors like Nick and so on that, you know, th they're gonna eventually be selling a lot more and it's just gonna happen, right? And it's gonna be kind of like it really happened now where there was no time and it just, boom. The market was crazy and then the market's not crazy. When that comes up, I just want to be prepared and ready for that. So I want to set my goals. I want to focus a majority of my time on my commercial and then a smaller majority on servicing. And then the rest of them that I have time left would be on home auto, new quotes, things. That's the digital side. Yeah. I mean, just starting right up, basically, we kind of started already last month, but just doing a lot more 
Google, Yelp, those types of ads, and then also doing asking for more referrals through some of our email campaigns and things like that, that we send out to our current clients. I don't think that's something that we utilize enough. Like we have it in our signatures, in our emails, but that's not necessarily always getting read. And I think actually asking someone, hey, do you know someone that you could refer to me is gonna be a lot better or more beneficial to us in terms of growth. So those are the things that I wanna focus on digitally is our email campaigns and then Yelp, Google, and Facebook, LinkedIn. Really try to do the social media ads along with your you know, pay-per-click for Google. Smart, smart. And for, yeah, for me, I think it's gonna be more about finding a way to creating a flow essentially for all the projects that I have to do. Make sure that I am continually knowing exactly where each project is within its creation process. Just keeping that on top. And then I'm gonna go back to tried and true time blocking for social media and other types of advertising. I think a lot of us will be like, there's so many more cool ways or I can automate it or I can, you know, use Zapier to I post it here and then it posts everywhere else. And I think sometimes you can get so bogged down in that kind of stuff, making it so efficient that you forget to actually do the thing in the first place for whatever that is, whether you're make, making the content or publishing the content you already have. Just kind of making sure that is a priority will be my biggest thing for this next year. Any final things that you think that we did not touch when it came to your two biggest mistakes? how you're fixing it, the weather, whatever you guys want to talk about. I'm all ears. Just said with this, and that is a lot of people will wait until January 1st to, to change something new. I think change now. What's wrong with steering your ship on December 3rd a little bit better, a little bit differently. If you know you're going to change anyway, why give it another month of crap to be like, oh, this month I'm just going to let it go because I'll start clean on a clean plate. Like it's such a psychological screwing with ourselves that we do to manipulate things to make it sound good. But again, if it means that much to us, that would be my suggestion is start tomorrow or whatever that next work day is for you and start it from that point forward versus again, letting another 28 days slip by and then be like, okay, now I can start clean. But I think that goes for anything, right? You think about the diet and somebody had come across that recently and they're just like, screw the first of a month, screw a certain number you have in your head. If it's that important to you, start today, start tomorrow, because who's to guarantee you anything from a time standpoint, right? And that re really resonated with me. I heard that earlier this year. So that, those are my closing thoughts. It's, as, it's just as simple as that. It's simple, but not easy. That's always the thing. And I think you know where I'm going with this one. Let us know, what are your two biggest mistakes from this last year? How bad did you mess up? Were you one of those bankrupt people? Let us know, like, we're all, we're here. We're just here for you, you know? But yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know if we missed something. You know, we love to hear all and any feedback. We reply to all comments that are actually relevant. Anyone that just posts random things. I was like, I don't know how you expected. Why'd you post that? Don't be that guy. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Business Bookend, a part of the Beyond Real Estate Podcast. Thank you, Charles, for joining us this week. Where can people find you? And is it only people in California that you work with? Actually, no, I do California, Nevada, Arizona, and Texas. And you can find me at aimsave.com. That's A-I-M-S-A-V-E.com. And you can just give us a call or shoot me an email. Perfect. And if you are lazy like I am and you don't want to try to type it out while he was spelling it out for you, we have his information below. So go check that out. Charles, thank you for joining us this week on the Beyond Real Estate Podcast. We appreciate your time. And for everyone else, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week. Want to see, hear, or listen to more of Nick's take on California real estate market? Check out my links below. Also, check out the links below for more information on products, books, or references made in this podcast. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.